play in round 21. Glenelg versus Sturt. Stuart McCulley from right of screen and from the left. It will be big Justin Salisbury, the left hand raking down. McCulley got the better of the knock. Charging in from centre square was Joey Wyatt. So too there is Getty playing on centre wing. Feeds off to Damian Kitschke at centre half back today. Around the body it goes to half forward. Well done by Matthew Dent. Good use of the body. Dispatched a player. Heel can't keep it in. And the first boundary throw in of the game. We might mention conditions are perfect for football. It probably didn't need to be said it here at Glenelg Oval. The action coming to you on ABC Sport from the throw in. Bartlett was, but from behind, line it. Thumped the ball towards the line. Number six, Brendan Bakley. Just unable to keep the ball in. And we'll have a throw in at a very good crowd here today, and you would expect that with conditions as they are. Absolutely perfect conditions. It's uh, one of the best days of football we've seen all year. And there's an air of expectation. We spoke with Sturt officials before the game. They are very confident. Bartlett hands off to Heel. Running through centre-half back. Time for two bounces. Lifts the eyes. The target out there on the far side and getting a good lift was Flower. Couldn't take it in the end. In the end, it was Jeremy Stagg around the corner. Also, there is uh, John Richter. Flower charges his way through. Finally gets a boot to the ball. Matthew Denson at centre-half forward. Well picked up by Hamilton. Scrappy piece of play. The umpire's found a free kick at centre-half back. And uh, whilst Jody Arnold takes off, the ball will be given over to a Glenelg player in Paul Hamilton. A little ambitious Arnold. That could have been 50 metres. Marshall, game number 349 for him. The last game for him probably at the Bay. Mansell, the big fly from, from behind it was Wyatt. Playing on the wing today, centres it up. Richter, ruck roving today. At home in the centre in recent weeks though, but he is ruck roving today. To half forward, Leonard had the ball thumped away from him by Ango. Good work, the new chum. Ango in his first game gets another touch of the ball. Around the corner it goes. 55 is Marcus Trimboli. He centres it up nicely. And Corey Gray just inside the square. Marks, he feeds it off. It's a beautiful lead to Arnold. And Jody Arnold 40 metres out directly in front. The tackle on Trimboli just not quite effective enough because he's still got a leg free. And it resulted in a pass from Richter short into Arnold, who has 45 goals so far this year has played pretty well from full forward. This, in the absence of any breeze, should be a fairly easy shot for goal. His best contribution, 10 goals against West Adelaide. In one of only three or two wins for the year, and that looks dead centre it is. It's a goal, Sturt first on the board. That might be the lifter. And if they get their tails up, this Sturt side could be dangerous. Yes, three weeks ago it was. I think that uh, Jody Arnold against West Adelaide slammed through 10. It's a good start from the Double Blues. They look confident, as we said earlier, that uh, there was an air of expectation from them. At uh, Glenelg Oval, everything's in uh, perfect order for uh, an upset. Glenelg not playing well at home, so it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. That is a good observation. I think uh, Glenelg have only won one at home this year so far. Hamish Stewart playing at centre-half forward, tries to give it away. Barton was just thrown away by Kitschke. He looks more vigorous today. Six with the ball, Brendan Baker. He was thrown away. Now Geddes gets a boot to ball to the outer side it goes. 56 is Jeremy Stagg, new chum. Andrew Johns, an old hand. Back it goes to Stagg. On the left boot he goes short. This is Richter. Marshall wraps him up. Now goes after the ball yet again. Two tackles in one, Marshall. He made terrific ground. David Marshall playing in the centre of the ground up against Corey Gray, a youngster who has impressed and uh, to the point where he's obviously impressed himself because he put himself up for the draft and uh, he's up against David Marshall, Sturt electing to have John Richter on the ball. Barton around the corner, a high ball, West sits underneath this one, Fidge went to ground, now his direct opponent today is Ben Judd. Now across the field to Wyatt, a loose ball, Simon Hill, it sat nicely for him, he just needs to get clear, he tripped at the crucial stage. Out it goes Hamish Stewart, unprotected goal. He gets his first and the Tigers first. Scores are locked away. We're only minutes into the first turn. Not a favourable bounce for Joey Wyatt, who is directly opposed to Simon Heal. I thought that Heal could have got it out a little quicker than he did, having lost feet and laying on the ground there. Didn't quite pick up that poor bounce, but this is where it is that Heal perhaps could have been a little quicker. Nonetheless, the third attack was on the player on the ground. They forgot about Hamish Stewart, who had a free run at goal. The Bays first. All those five minutes in, Glenelg one goal, Sturt one goal, and at the bounce, McCulley, who's been rarely beaten this year, pushes the ball to ground. Robbie Thompson from a half-back flank pushes it to Barton at half-forward. 
good defence. Jay Viney thumps the ball high over the top. This is Barton again, but Viney got him. Phil McGinnis, a long handball, intercepted by Baker. This chap's impressed to the opposite side of the ground. That could have been dangerous, but running away with the ball. Ben Judd playing on full back, if you don't mind. And on John Fitch. Around the corner he goes. Underneath that one, Justin Salisbury to half forward is a wayward kick. And now Simon Hill covering plenty of ground. Just pushes the ball towards the boundary. Hamilton was clean bowled and Hill again to the line. Covering plenty of territory early in this game, Simon Hill. Five and a half minutes into the first term and the scores are locked away. Glenelg and Sturt, one goal apiece. Wonderful day for football and the lead up to the finals just around the corner. It promises to be a great build up. Glenelg for their part looking for consolidating in the five and if they can getting third spot Simon Hill that player I spoke of a moment ago into the path of McGuinness who's been prolific early in this game goes towards the player there at half forward in Jim West feeds inside the runner McGuinness was very good fires away at the northern end goals but is just offline one behind and Glenelg go along to 1-1 Sturt a one straight goal Philip McGuinness on a day like today can cut sides to shreds it's dry and it's quick and those are the conditions that he revels in Judd to the outer side. A long clearing kick into space. Well done, Mansell. He stole the loose crumb. Around the corner he goes. It's high. Chick Whitten caught underneath it. Corey Gray thumps it to ground. Flower was taken high. And Flower will take the free kick. It's Campbell Flower at half forward. One of the quiet achievers in the Tiger side this year. 21 years of age. Has amassed 21 games. He goes short. Jay Viney dropped a chest mark. You won't often see that. He wraps up Marshall. One of the things Jay Viney does, uh, Stephen, and you would know better than most being a former Sturt coach, is that uh, Jay Viney's tackling and his attack on the ball unquestioned. His work rate's very good. The only thing I'm surprised at, David, is that he would be uh, lining up consistently in a, in a back pocket. Justin Salisbury wraps the player up because Jay is such a creative player. He loves to run ahead of the play, and uh, when Sturt are going well, as they have been uh, relatively over the last six weeks, he can really cut sides to pieces, so I'm a little surprised that he sits back. Well, I'd probably accept that assessment, but uh, perhaps they haven't wanted big scores kicked against them, and he has been a pretty good defender. Baker to the outer side. Good work over the top of that. The boy from Broken Hill, Lyndon Bow, but around the corner, Dent it was who cleaned, cleaned him up, and Hamilton, the excessive player. To the safety of the boundary line, and I'm not sure that that's good tactics. There is a slight breeze favouring the end to which Glenelg are kicking to. I thought Hamilton would have just put the boot into that and driven it long. Plenty of experience though, Hamilton, as we come up to the eight minute mark of the first term. Marshall, surprising, flies. Corey Gray tries to get a quick boot to it, can't do so. Philip McGuinness, great give. On the up, reflex was very good to uh, Chigwin, and the skipper drives it into centre half forward. Well done by West around the body of Andrew Underwood. Salisbury cleans up, Judd. Johns. The run and protection now should be provided by Kitschke to half forward. He goes over the head of all players and Brendan Baker with a chance now on the left leg. Shoots it in towards Arnold. Who's got it? I must say he impresses me. He looks a better player than I gave him credit for. Now he pushes in long. Joe White, one-handed attempt across hands and over the line for a rush behind. The thing about Jody Arnold is that uh, inside of, let's say, 40 metres, he's a very accurate kick. So if they can get him enough possession of the ball, he can usually convert pretty well. Strong, isn't he? A terrific lead. This is Ross Gibbs. To the outer side, he pinpoints the kick. Lyndon Bow just missed a sitter. Long kick to the outer side. First man up was Geddes. Couldn't bring the ball to ground. There's a free kick being picked out. There was a push to the umpire. Amy Stewart tried to get away with the ball. Not happy with the umpire. Throws the ball back. Well, he be the judge. Barton was just collecting Geddes over the shoulder. Jeremy Stagg, centre wing. Right leg towards half forward he goes. And just edged out of the play, Brett Lena. Well, if that free kick went to Jeremy Stagg, it was his own player that pushed him. <laughs> well, it just uh, it didn't seem to add up, did it? Well, it was either Geddes Hamish... free kick or it was play on. It's probably why Hamish Stewart was going so quick. Let's have a look at Phil McGuinness, though, on the right leg from half forward. Shoots it in towards the pocket and West with great mobility. Can't quite take it. Viney cleans up. Now Underwood would be better served going back towards the line. He goes into the corridor, which is somewhat dangerous. Not the right choice. They'll get away with it this time, though, as Scott Sutherland breaks free. One bounce, now two, three. Unsure of which way to go. Marshall just rounds him up like a sheepdog. Well done, David. Baker 
not so sure about where he should go, and in the end, he go, gets to Gray at centre half forward. Might have looked a little untidy, but it was certainly effective in the end, because now Corey Gray has the opportunity directly in front from only 45 metres. Doubtless warm today with the long sleeve jumper on. A brilliant day at Glenelg Oval from just outside the 50 metre mark. Not a bad sort of a kick, Corey. That's through for one goal, his first. And the Double Blues get their second on the board. Well, I think when a lot of people looked at the uh, AFL draft and Corey Gray had put himself in, there was a few eyebrows raised, but questioning whether he was good enough. But when you see a, a player that makes the yardage that he did from centre half back to centre forward, and then can mark and drill that ball from 45 metres out into a slight breeze. He's certainly got some talent. Back in the centre square. Nearly 11 minutes in, and it's Sturt. 2-1, lead the Tigers on 1-1. Again, McCulley gets the tap away, but only as far as Richter. Perhaps could have made it a little better, but it's an exit from centre square for Sturt. Dent with a big round arm. Marshall goes in strongly. Gray, who kicked the last goal, gets it away to half forward. Perhaps the forward pocket arm. Noel uses the body intelligently, then doubles back. Lines up, straightens up, and goes. His second, and the double blues their third. This is not a performance of a side that uh, has been walloped for most of the season. In fact, Glenelg beat Sturt 98 points, by 98 points, in round five earlier this year at Adelaide Oval, my recollection. And then they played them again mid-year, round 14 at Adelaide Oval, and the margin was back to 36 points. And we said at the start that Sturt are improving, and this game... They lead by 12 points. So they've just been a side that have been so hard to pick. They've been very inconsistent, up and down, and uh, some good performances, some good quarters, and some bad quarters. Well, uh, talking to the coach, they've played perhaps one very good quarter of football a game. Now he's looking for two or three. McCulley and Salisbury to square off in the centre square area. Sturt at 3-1, Glenelga 1-1. And we're just over 10 minutes in. Richter's caught, claimed. Plenty of Glenelg players. One of them is Campbell Flower. Now on the left leg, the full forward he goes. Dropping back was West. Couldn't quite take it. Underwood intelligently towards the line. Should take it over the line. It elects to keep it in. Well, Sturter having, having a go. And uh, certainly showing a little bit of flair at the moment as Ben Judd comes streaming out of defence. The drop punt to the centre square area where Baker sets himself. But Ross gives tons of experience. Yes, he did that well. A lot of players would have been forced to punch, but not Ross. He's good overhead. So is this man, Jim West. Very strong at centre half forward. In fact, they're playing on a half-forward flank. Hamish Stewart's the designated centre forward. Fidge, out of match conditioning, fumbled there. The pace is just too strong early. Hamish Stewart goes to ground, and Sturt tie him up for a bounce. Sturt have started well, but David, we haven't really seen enough of this game unfold to uh, find out too much about uh, that Sturt defensive zone as Richard Williams gets things going again at Glenelg Oval. But you just wonder about Judd lining up on Fidge, Viney on West. But, uh, they're really outgunned in terms of physical size, aren't they? Yes, I think that's a fair observation. I think what uh, Hayden Bunton is looking for is that uh, their pace may be superior to their Glenelg opponents and maybe just looking to run it out of their defence into their forward line. The thump from McCulley. Salisbury, who's done most of the rucking work through the latter part of the season, ahead of Brett Lena, Kitschke. Scrap of players. Campbell Flower hasn't done too badly early in this game. He shoots towards the northern end. Fidge just uses the body beautifully, and there is an example of the strength. I think that's a perfect example of what you're talking about. When the ball comes in quickly to John Fidge, his sheer physical strength will outgun Ben Judd every time. And Fidge goes back, pops it through easy for his first. And uh, he'd be looking for a bag of goals today, I would suspect. He certainly would be, and Mark Russell, who sits in interchange, could consider himself just a little unlucky because he's done pretty well in uh, Fidji's absence. But John Fidge, come finals time, is certain to be uh, the Tigers' key man up forward. And as you say, David, would love to find some form leading up to the games in the finals in three weeks' time. At the bounce, McCulley, who hasn't been beaten in the last few weeks, even though Glenelg have lost two of their last three, Wins it down. Bailey, improving form for him. His early season form was atrocious. If that's the second mark that Jay Vine, he's dropped. Almost inexplicable. And if Marshall didn't get a headlock from Corey Gray, I'll go he. <laughs> this wasn't a bad sort of a tackle. What? Albeit too high. <laughs> 14 and a half minutes in to the first term and the, the value of exit from the centre of the square area on display there. The tap from McCulley was just superb. Bailey was clever inside towards the captain in Chigwitten, Corey Graves works back well and 
wraps the players up for a bounce down just 30 metres out from the Tiger goal. Just looking at the structure, Sturt playing defensively. See, they've got five or six players. Goalwood side attacking Linnell as they push forward. It's not a bad ploy early in this match. Chick Whitten through, did it well. Mansell, he's hungry around goals. Goes towards goal too. Oh my goodness, he's kicked it. He has, he gets his first. He's tremendously talented around goals, Darren Mansell. Has played at centre, has played in a back pocket, but is certainly uh, playing great football on the ball. Correct observation that uh, the Sturt side have dropped players back into their defensive zone, working back with numbers and trying to run it out, but you've got the skill of someone like uh, Darren Mansell and the quick reflex that came out to him makes not a scrap of difference because it just will beat sides every time. Scores locked away, 16 minutes into the first term here at Glenelg. And again in ruck, McCulley high over the top, wins it, the ball goes loose. Andrew Johns plucks it in, he goes long to Jody Arnold. Ango did well on the half volley. Good work, young man, towards the boundary line he goes. Nothing wrong with that in his first day game. He looked pretty good. Superbly done, really took a chance. Ross Gibbs works back and uh, gives him some encouragement as well, but he really took the chance. He's got some pace, Ango. I think that's the thing that he will add to this Glenelg defence. His sixth Foundation Cup game so far, but as you said earlier, this is his first day game. On top of the ball, Heel gets it out to Bailey. Again, Bailey in the overlap. The second effort is good. Oh. Now, McGinnis, that's one of the things he does occasionally, just gives it away. I think he just panics. He doesn't back his judgment. He is a talented player. Gibbs went solidly at it. He got hit too. Forward goes the ball into space. Brett Lean it over the top. Robbie Thompson just stole it. The kick was smothered. Heel, Chick, Whitten, McGinnis. There's three of them there. It's a den of... Tiger Cubs and Barton couldn't keep the ball in play and it's across the line. There's an amazing number of Tiger players there that just sat slightly forward of the play. It was McGuinness, Heal, Bailey, Chigwidden and McCulley. They run, don't they? They just keep running. And there's an infringement in Ruck. Justin Salisbury gave it away. Now, Chigwidden, a long ball. Jim West, one-handed attempt from behind. Ben Judd with pace. Now, that's the bonus. He can run off Fidge and push the ball forward as he has done on this occasion. This is Richter, another long sleeve Guernsey. It's very hot out there. From behind, lean at the big fly, brings it to ground. The kick off Thompson's boot was smart, and look at the tackle by Andrew Johns. He brings the player to ground, and there's a bounce. It's a great tackle. And, uh, there's a school of thought, of course, that says that when you tackle a player and he can't get rid of the ball like that without holding onto the ball itself, that it should be holding the ball in the spirit of the law. I'm not so sure about that. I think the umpire did the right thing. John's got away a handball. Good work, Lyndon Bow. Forces it towards the line. Defensively done. Flower paddles it in front of him. Across the line it goes. Scores are locked away. Three goals, one apiece. And there's a throw in at half forward for Glenelg. It is an interesting point, though, isn't it? That if a player is tackled and uh, doesn't have it held to him, that the tackle should be rewarded for not allowing the player to actually get rid of the ball. And therefore... I think they designate how long he had to get rid of it. Uh, if he's had time to get rid of it, he's tackled. It's a free. If he hasn't had time, it's a ball up. Uh, that's my ruling. <laughs> you see you taking Roger Magor's job on the umpire's board. 18 and a bit minutes into the first term. Or Desi Fosters. Or Des Fosters. Lean it over the top. Good tap because he is a very good ruckman and one wonders whether... They get the best benefit from him in the full forward position. Now, Richter was claimed. That was a free kick for sure. Illegally, says the umpire. And from half forward, he'll get a kick, but it's given Glenelg a chance to work back in numbers. Marcus Trimboli thinks that he's going to take it, but I think uh, Marcus will have to give it over, won't I you? think it was an FAD, free kick downfield. Since the handball only went two metres, <laughs> the kick was downfield. <laughs> well, that's the ruling, I've got to tell you. Now, racing at that, Donald Dickey, he's fourth game. We haven't seen a lot of him this year. He's wiry and noticeable because his socks are down. And looking very much like Joey Wyatt too. Uh, very similar players from front on, so we'll have to work hard to get them right today. Brett Leanett, again over the top he goes. Plenty of height. Angove, I think it was, from uh, back, uh, back flank. Geddes provides the chase. Glenelg work it out with numbers. Phil McGuinness is getting plenty of touches. And this one ends up in the hands of Hamish Stewart. Put that uh, good work down to Angove. Not only is he quick, he's got a penetrating kick. Let's hope he can keep this form up. Jim West just dropped it. I wonder whether that breeze is a little bit more fluky than we think. The ball must be swirling out there. Joe Wyatt goes away from Chick Whitten with pace. Very few players can do that. John's just missed it comprehensively. Mansell, now John's comes back on it. Support and a free kick. Away goes Salisbury. A long raking left foot kick into the ball. Oh. And Ango 
set himself the young man and got it. This is a terrific debut. Oh, he'd be loving this at the moment. I'm not so sure that he held it for long enough. It was, uh, it was in the arms. It will normally be paid if uh, the impact on the ground or a player after it's under control. But that one didn't look to be quite controlled. The kick, however, is not at all good. Richter, Dickey, sidesteps, does it well. Now around the body and is offline. And Jody Arnold stands in the square and says, hey, what about me? Yes, I think Jody Arnold's right. The handball just had to go over the top of the player. Arnold was in the unprotected goal square, standing by himself. That was the right option to go over the top to Arnold. And uh, that's a good thing about Jody Arnold, experienced player. Here it goes. Had the opportunity to handball here and now kicks. And look at Arnold, standing there, lamenting. Gibbs brings it in. Glenelg choosing to cluster at centre-half back and provide a runner. Protection for one runner who bolts to the side. And heel on this occasion was the player who got free. The 22-year-old, the half-back. Uh, Nigel, or Darren Nigel Mansell from half back to the centre of the ground area, setting himself is West can't get it over the top of three players, now Bo is strong, great leg power but only as far as Viney short, player in there was Jeremy Stagg now Underwood and Sturt are a little indirect at the moment, they need strong straight running players, now they've got one with Sutherland, pressure is applied from Bartlett but not before Sutherland gets it up to the full forward line and nails it Sutherland's first and Sturt's fourth. Oh, and Andrew Johns doesn't like the attention he received at midfield. He lets umpire Richard Williams know. But uh, let me say this. It was very good skills. Look at the handballs that hit their targets. First it was Underwood, then Salisbury, then Johns. Now Johns gets clobbered here. Bang. Behind play. And every handball hit its target. And that's something that uh, Hayden Button would be very pleased to see. Sturt, 4-2. Glenelg, 3-1. 22 minutes into this the first term and it's a good start from the double blues and not one at this ground since 1986 gee way up over the top went the player there in redshaw i think it was looks to have just come onto the ground for stuart mccalley i suggest and uh, a rebound in the center square area that's that the plan isn't it they uh, use their ruckman till the 20 minute mark use the uh, backup off the bench for the last 10 minutes and just set the uh, first ruckman to be fresh for the second quarter marshall's kick was a furby Simon Hill to the outer side, Furby. Uh, really didn't quite connect, but it did. Geddes. Now, this is dangerous, very dangerous. Oh, well, it was a mark to Amy Stewart, but Kitschke got a push in the back, said the umpire. And Andrew Geddes would have to be the luckiest footballer on the oval. Certainly was. It was fraught with danger. Kitschke handballs off, runs into his opponent. Sutherland, who kicked the last goal, short, the halfback, has Underwood. Now takes a break, one bounce, lifts the eyes. The kick is terrible, though, and not really giving anybody a chance down there. Dickey comes in strongly, so too does Hamilton. Thompson was claimed, now claims the player, and a bounce down inside the Sturt 50-metre zone. Underwood lost it. They were pushing forward. Jody Arnold was on the lead. He had two or three options. He only had to make the kick. It was finishing skills that were required, and they were sadly missing on that occasion. Jeremy Stagg got the loose ball out, but it's stolen away by Ross Gibbs. Cleverly around the corner finds Simon Hill. He's had a very good year, Simon Hill, hasn't he? He's also had a good start to this game. Joey White will need to tighten up on him. Chick Witten through. Look to give it, looks to give it off to McGuinness, but uh, Andrew Johns off the ground. Cleverly done. Gives it off now to Dent, playing at centre-half. What a long ball. Arnold was held by Hamilton. Play on set the umpire, and Hamilton goes for the safety of the boundary line. Lamel just not quite hitting the target at the moment. There are several uh, handballs that have gone astray and they've been in the absence of pressure. You expect them to uh, make some errors if, in fact, they're under fierce pressure from the opposition, but they're making them themselves at the moment. That's a free kick. Well, I think there is some... Uh, vigorous pressure by Sturt, however. I think the errors that uh, Glenelg have made at the moment aren't, in, well, necessarily a, a direct result of that. As uh, a player out there in Bart feeds off to Flower. Flower with an awkward looking drop punt to half forward. All players flew except for one, and that was Mansell. Did it pretty well. Took the crumb. Balanced it up well. Now David Marshall gained 349. Short towards the player in Chigwin, but that's the player in White that we mentioned. Needing to do a little more work, and as the dust flies from uh, Joey's short, sharp steps, reflex. Judd has come a long way down from full back, fires it up towards half forward, lean it's the target, can't quite take it. Bailey can, feeds back to uh, Bo and Glenelga away. The Bo kick is a penetrating one out from centre half forward, Jim West. 
shrugs the tackle from Geddes. It's a booming kick to half forward. What a terrific kick. Hamish Stewart sits underneath it. Kitsky applied enough pressure. Stewart off the ground, blasted forward. Where's Fitch? Streaming out. The clever handball Viney gets it back to Judd. They're combining well, this Sturt defence. And Wyatt marks in front of Simon Hill. He looks to play on quickly. Chief Witten tried to intimidate him. Johns with pace. You can't believe Sturt are on the bottom the way they're playing today. Lean at one-handed attempt. Couldn't gather it in. Over the top of this one, Donald Dickey. Gibbs, cool as you like, to the back door he goes, and Thompson. Thompson short, Bartlett had worked hard to make himself free and available to halfback. Now goes a little further down the ground and gets McGuinness. Now McGuinness will break, short pass from him is a beauty. Look at the loose men. Well, Sturt had surged forward, McGuinness provides the run again, and he's cutting Sturt the pieces through the midfield at the moment, though they are bouncing back in the main from that full back line. They've done pretty well back there despite some pressure. Here's another example as Underwood comes out. Decision-making process unsure. Now Baker around in circles he goes. Eventually comes back to Judd. In fact, it's Geddes. It looks similar coming front on. Well done, Bailey. Shovels it towards the line. And uh, Sturter again, temporarily out of trouble. Richter and Bailey playing on each other. Should be an absorbing duel. The sparks flying off those two later in this game. We saw Bailey a couple of weeks ago against uh, North Adelaide at Prospect. Really stitch up Daryl Hart, who the week before was quite fantastic so Bailey's a good stopper yes he's been used in that role successfully this year Baker comes away with it gives it to Corey Gray off it goes to Joe, Joe Wyatt he's gave himself a little bit of space by running backwards and leaving it on the lead successfully at half forward and Glenelg have got some players at the moment that just aren't working hard enough from that neutral ball contest at half back for them or half forward for them just let the Sturt players go free Dent finds Baker only his 16th game. There's plenty of inexperience in this young double blues lineup. Maybe they're underestimating uh, Sturt at the moment, Glenelg, because they seem to be flat-footed. Bar perhaps a couple. McGuinness is one, Simon Hill's another, but the others.